What's up guys, welcome back to Atlas. I'm going to be rebuilding my multi-purpose battle brigantine, the Seawolf, or a replica of it. The original boat was built on official PvE. It's a PvE build, of course. It would work in PvP, but it would want tweaking. But like I said, it's a PvE boat, so please don't hit me up afterwards telling me that your little sloop will destroy me, um, because it's a PvE build. Like I said, you could make this work, but it'd want some tweaking. The idea of this ship, if you didn't see the original video, which you can find in the description below or at the end of the video on the end screen, um, the original boat's designed to take out ships that are damned, take out whales, and while you're doing that, collect sunken treasure. This will take on a whole fleet of ships that are damned on its own, perfectly fine, um, as long as you're a bit sensible about it. But if you get into trouble, it's got a plenty of armour to protect itself, so you should always be safe enough with it. Overall, this ship's the best possible ship you could get on Atlas as far as I'm concerned. As soon as you unlock Brigantine in your skill tree, build this boat and it will make you a lot of gold very quickly and really really increase your um, progress through the game. For this build you're going to need 3 large sails, 40 planks, 2 ship decks and a steering wheel to make this boat um, you know, seaworthy and obviously the ship skeleton. Out of them 40 planks, you're going to use 12 of them as gun ports, but you don't have to. You can just use 40 normal planks if that's what you want to do. We will not be using the gun ports for guns. I like to have them as a personal preference, even if I'm not going to use them as gun ports. Just to have um, a view outside, if I'm below deck, I can see what's going on. And I also just like the look of them. Um, the sails, I use three large handling sails because this ship is heavy at the end and um, it's a multi-purpose brigantine it needs to, the agility which you just don't get with large speed sails obviously it's a lot slower than a ship with speed sails but at the end of the day the um, handling sails give this boat its maneuverability you could probably do two large speed sails and a large handling sail i wouldn't want to do that um, i really like the three large handling sails i personally only operate this ship in n1 and um, yeah, it's I don't really do that much distance with it, so it's always in that sort of area. Everything I need is up there. Um, so yeah, I'm not really worried about how long it will take me to get places. And with the three large handling sails, I still have enough speed to get away from anything I need to get away from, as far as ships of the damned and whales are concerned. Obviously, like I mentioned earlier, it's not a PvP boat, and if it was a PvP um, boat I'd be in trouble because obviously I would be super slow and a sitting duck but it is very heavily armoured so if you did use this boat on PvP and you had a fleet of a few friends with you you'd probably be okay. So you're gonna need 34 ceilings to seal these two decks in um, obviously to fully seal them you'd want 36 but we want to leave um, a gap for the stairs to go down between the two decks um, for the rest of the the like building pieces, like roof tiles and walls and stuff, I'm not entirely sure how many pieces it's going to take. Um, I normally just farm a load of resources whenever I'm building anything, and then I just make you know hundreds of different components which I'll then use. It's up to you where you decide to put your stairs to get down below the decks. I like to put my main entrance into the, the first deck in the middle of the boat because you'll see later I, I make everything fit around it in the middle of the boat. And then to get down into the hole right at the bottom of the ship you can put it wherever but it's kind of up to you where you want to have access. This part here is the basically the mega structure that everything's going to be on, the steering platform, the cannon rack cannon wreck. Um, the cannon platform and then the blister platform will be above the cannons. Um, we'll take a look at that when we get to it and again like I said, I'm really sorry I don't know how many pieces this actually takes to build um, but if you want a tip and a way to build things I like to have everything made ready to go before I start building like all the components we just talked about earlier, the sails etc. Um, with the building pieces I just farm up sort of like 50 60k of each resource I'm gonna need and I just make things as I'm going although normally I'll make a few hundred um, say walls and ceilings and stuff like that um, just so I've got enough to start and I can make any extras later on So 
So these reef tiles I'm putting in here are the start of the armour that will surround the ship and all you're doing is connecting them to the top of the walls we put in for the mega structure um, and that is what the entire armour that surrounds the ship is connected to. Now with the other ones we're just trying to snap the reef tiles to the ceiling tiles inside and the tops of walls anything like that to add additional armor and then at the end you end up with a like multi-layered effect like this um, and that's how you get that effect it's just connecting the roof tiles to the ceilings inside and the tops of walls this part here is an additional thing i didn't do this on my original build because i put my planks on before I had um, put the armour on like an idiot and I never went back to change it but um, I wish I had done this originally I did intend to do it but I just messed it up um, and all it does is without the planks you can put the roof through the back of the brigantine which you can't do the planks on and it just adds additional armour to the back of the ship which is going to take most of the damage With the armour that surrounds the entire ship, which is what I added on to here, you can go down two roof tiles on each bit, so there's always two roof tiles. Um, and then just here I'm leaving a gap to put a door in, which I'll later connect some stairs to, which is, gives access in and out of the ship nice and easily. But that's up to you, you don't have to put this in, this is just a nice little touch that I like to add on for myself. Um, but you could still get on and off the ship without that. And just here you can see the back of the ship starting to take shape now. Um, but I did realise that's what I'm doing right now, is notice that the um, symmetry was off. I couldn't work out what I'd done wrong. It was actually the additional bit I added, which I mentioned earlier, which wasn't on the original build. Um, I went one tile too far and it's thrown the um, symmetry out. So I'm about to go and fix that. That's that all sorted, it's all nice and symmetrical now. Basically the bit I added in that I didn't have on the original ship is the bit that completes the full loop of the ship. So um, the rear bit that I messed up should attach perfectly to the top of the outer armour plates that go all the way around the edge of the ship. So that's how to remember how it goes. So before you do the front of the ship um, you need to put the diving attachments in. Now you don't need to have both attachments, but I like the the like symmetry of having one on each side, so that's why I do it. But you do need to have one of them to like complete the whole idea of this ship, the multi-purpose role. Um, and then then you want to put your sails in so that you can line up the front armour. Um, I always have them spread out nice and evenly, the sails, um, which is what I've done there. So yeah, you want to do this now, and then you can complete the armour around the outside. So like my little um, ship access doors, I do one on each um, diving attachment. That's up to you whether you want to put them on there or not. You could like run up to the steering platform and then along the um, armour to get to them. But I like to have the doors there just for the ease of it. And then I like to have one a door on the front of the ship just here where we are now. Um, just to get to the front of the ship if I need to. Now the armour's complete, we just need to um, fix all the access points. 
So um, we've got the doors in, so now I'm just going to put some stairs on each part. Um, I do it over the diving attachment because it makes it easier than jumping up over the little lip that's left. Um, and then I do it on the access points and um, I just like the finish of it and um, yeah, it just makes things nice and simple. Now it's time to put the steering wheel in. I always put it on the back here um, on this little lip I made. You don't have to though. If you would rather have it in the middle, you could make some sort of little platform for it. Um, but I like to have it at the back where the most protection is. And also it's right next to the cannons and ballistas. It's cannon time. On this ship we have 10 cannons, um, basically you have 5 on each side. The first one you, you put as far over to the side as you can. I always put this one in a little bit on the wonk, just so it's, um, it, like I said, as close to the edge as I can get it. And then the second one we put in, we'll line that up nice and square and the next ones will all come off the second one. Then over to the opposite side, do exactly the same, put the first one in, put it on a little bit of a wonk if you have to, and then get the second one straight and obviously connect all the other ones to the second cannon. Um, and then you'll end up with a little gap in the middle, which you could put another cannon into if you wanted to, it's up to you. I like to leave a little gap um, just in case I want to get out that way or if I climb in the back of the boat that way, there's a little gap to walk through. So you might have noticed the cannons are on the raised part of the platform and the reason you have to put this raised platform in is because of this part of the brigantine, the little lip that sticks out the back. Once you've got the planks in, even though that ceiling tile below looks like it's above it, um, there's like an invisible barrier and your cannons will clip it as you fire and um, at certain angles they won't fire out of the ship essentially. So just moving them up half of a wall um, gets rid of that problem and these cannons will always fire directly out and never have any issue. So onto the blisters, we have three blisters on this ship. You put the first one in, as close to the edge and the front of the ceiling tile as you can, then repeat the process on the other side with the second one, then put one in between the two, and obviously if you put the two end ones in you can get the middle one nice and centralised. Also this platform you'll notice is set back behind the cannons. If you put this platform directly above the cannons you get another bug with the cannons where even though they don't look like they're going to hit the top of the ceiling they will actually hit it as you fire out. So just set this back where this one is um, and then you won't have no issues. Now moving down below deck, we're putting everything we want on the boat in the middle of the boat. This is essential that you do this. Uh, don't put it at the back, you might get damaged and lose stuff. I've lost things before when I've put stuff at the back of my boat. So just put everything in the middle, it's nice and easy to access everything and it keeps it nice and safe. Whatever you put down here is completely up to you. These are the things I like to have on my boat. Um, like I said though, it's personal preference. And as you can see now, it's all in the centre, really easy to access everything and it's all nice and organised. And yeah, it'll all be nice and safe here. And there we go, the multi-purpose, multi-role battle brigantine that will do absolutely everything you need it to do. It will make you a lot of gold and you'll have a lot of fun with it. Um, like I said, it will kill ships that are damned, it will kill whales, you can do treasure diving with it. It's got 10 cannons on it and 3 ballistas. It's an absolute beast and a ton of armour. This thing is an absolute tank. Yes, it's heavy. But it gets the job done. I've never, ever, ever had any problems with it. Um, it's always got me out of trouble and got me into trouble with the fun times. So it's, um, it's a great ship to have. Like I said, as soon as you level up and unlock the brigantine, make this the first ship you build. You will not be disappointed. 
Um, that's about it guys if you've got any questions about this build if you want to see me build any other kind of ships if you want to see me rebuild things that I've got in my videos that I haven't done builds for um, anything like that let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do if there's anything you want to see me try and build whether it's a building or a ship whatever let me know and again I'll see if I can sort something out but um, yeah, that's it, the multi-purpose battle brigand team, based on the Seawolf off of an official server, so this does work on official. This isn't like other videos you see where these big, burly ships are everywhere and they don't tell you that they've built it with mods or with spawning stuff in and um, it won't work on official. This absolutely 100% works on official. Like I said at the start of the video, if you want to check out the Seawolf, what this ship is based on, it's on the EU official server and the videos in the link in the description and at the end of the video. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope this boat does you a lot of good and makes you a lot of money and I hope you have a great time with it. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.